What's up, everybody? I'm the Mangus. You are awesome, and welcome back to For the Minions, the weekly vodcast all about upcoming third-person MOBAs. Uh, this week, we got lots of cover. We had the closed beta test from Overprime. We had the open weekend from Ethereal. Fault's been adding heroes and making updates. We got absolutely jack shit from Pred, as usual. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, what's our topic this Oh, yeah, what we talked about last week. We talked about the uh, the efficacy of these free weekends, and we'll uh, we'll hit that up again. Yeah, sorry, I screwed up the audio from last week, so that's why there was no show. Anyway, joining me, as always, is my friend and co-host, Jelly Knees. How you doing, Jelly? I'm fantastic, Mangoose. One of these weeks, I'm expecting you to be like, and joining me, as always, is the guest host. And then like, you're just going <laughs> to skip right over me. I don't know why I was like feeling it in that moment. He was like, he's going to skip me. I know it. <laughs> but I'm good, have. Mangoose. And with us this week, we do have Jay. Jay, welcome to For the Minions. Talk to us about like your how you got started with Paragon, who your favorite character was, all that good stuff. Um, well, uh, I started back um, in uh, March 16th, uh, Paragon's <laughs> launch. Um, I started there uh, again. I watched that um, that trailer uh, about a week prior, and uh, you know I was always into like um, you know third person action games, uh, being mainly on console most of my life. So uh, it appealed to me, and uh, I tried it out, and man, it, it was uh, it was a blast. Um, fell in love with like all the base heroes, um, besides Gadget, um, and <laughs> <laughs> what did the Gadget ever do to you? What the no, hell? No. Nothing at all. I don't know. I just never got around to playing her. But um, so uh, I ran into um, like my favorites are probably uh, Sparrow, uh, Countess, Seraph, and Wraith. I will say that's like my top. I should make it five, shouldn't I? Um, I don't know. Who cares? Despite <laughs> <laughs> having fun. done this once already, too, I completely forgot that you knew the day. Yeah, yeah. same You're here. Like March 16th. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Again, it surprised me all over again. All right. <laughs> I get it with Gadget, too. Gadget, like, plays way different than, like, any other Paragon hero, sort of. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. just a whole different play style for her. I like her. I like the, I like, I like the Gadget. She's great. She does <laughs> a very niche thing that nobody else does, which is super cool. Yeah. yeah. I played her once. Once. <laughs> and that was enough. Just once. Yeah. Yeah. And it was recently, too. It was, like, uh, a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely feel like there is like an our gadget versus their gadget kind of mentality though where it's like yeah. if it's your gadget she'll miss every mine she'll ult weird places she'll like do yeah, all these yeah. things their gadget hits every, every single time. thing every single good. time <laughs> <laughs> yep that's why i put the gadget on the mine on my own head and then run into them because <laughs> i know i'm gonna miss it all right so let's uh let's get into the news and updates for this week let's start off with Overprime. oh man ah uh, you know what? We didn't even talk. We, we talked about Rena last week, but we'll, we'll talk about Rena later. Let's talk about this closed beta test. Because holy crap. Um, personally, had way more fun with Overprime than I expected. And I expected mm -hmm. to have fun with it. Uh, uh, Jay, I, I know you got in there and played because I got a friend request from you, even though you, you turned down my group invite. But uh... <laughs> there was games to be played. I couldn't stop. Oh, um, no. <laughs> No, um, so yeah, that, that, it was very surprising, um, even from, like, the trailers and the little snippets they gave us, it was, uh, more fast-paced, but, um, less fast-paced than what I thought it was gonna be, uh, mm -hmm. I liked the, the pacing of it, it wasn't too bad, um, everything felt pretty good, um, heroes and all that, uh, I only, only played, like, four or five heroes, but, um, everyone felt pretty, uh, impactful, I never felt like I was, uh, wasting my time <laughs> in terms of like man i hit like a whoopee cushion or anything mm -hmm. stupid you know i <laughs> i actually felt like i was a threat no matter mm -hmm. who i played you know what i mean it, and it kind of came down to like you know who was the better player at the time jelly what are your thoughts uh yeah i pretty much agree across the board i, I played a bunch of games um i only lost the ones that i played with mangoose weird enough mm. um <laughs> <laughs> no but i think the, what I loved the most about it was the impact, the literal impact that everything had, right? That when you were doing something, like your screen shook or you like you felt everything happening to you, which I think was a really cool thing that didn't exist as much in Paragon. 
Now, I did have to turn down that impact just slightly in their settings because to me, it was making me sick at the same time of being so impacted by everything. Uh, but it was super fun. Uh, the balance was 90% there <laughs> in terms of the first pass, which is great for them because that takes time and that takes data. And this was their first kind of crack at it. So that's good to see. But yeah, overall, it was super fun. I enjoyed it way more than I expected it to. Uh, going in, I was like, yeah, I'll play a couple games probably and be like, okay, that's over prime, whatever. But like after playing it, it was like, this is its own, it scratches its own itch. It's not right. the Paragon itch anymore. It just is its own kind of fast arcadey kind of feeling that is, is good and it's fun to play. So I was, really, you, I was really happy to see them identifying problems as things went along and correcting them and then re-implementing the game it's a lot like what we saw with ethereal where you know they had some crashes or whatever but then they brought it back up patched it and kept it going uh overprime did the same um i was mistaken i thought we, we were talking about this before i thought that they had closed it down early because it seemed like it was early when it when it closed but that was the the time there's just they had on in their discord they had it listed as going till the 26th mm -hmm. but everywhere else said the 23rd so it didn't didn't really close early but they did have a lot of downtime due to maintenance, which is unfortunate. But I still played pretty much as much as I wanted to. It was a, it was a good time. Uh, Jay, were there any standouts to you as far as maybe overtuned heroes? Um. Ooh, sorry, Jelly. Um, Kayla. No, nope, pretty... I agree with you 100%. <laughs> yeah, Kayla's pretty out there, and there was one other hero that I was just like, man, it might need to... Who was it? Um, Can't think off the top of my head. I, I, I don't think it was any of the carries. The carries felt pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I'm pretty sure... It might have been Fang Mao. Because mm. I, I, I don't play Fang Mao at all, and I was annihilating people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was just like, you know, me being good at that particular moment, or I don't know if it was the character, but um, I mean, but when, you, Taylor. when you press right click and get a dash out of it, we'll talk about it later. But when you press right click and get a dash, <laughs> it makes sense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I'm 100 percent with you. Kayla was so far over tuned. It was ridiculous. Um, part of that, I think her biggest downfall is her dash distance, her lock on dash that rooted people was a mile long and you could do that from anywhere at any time. It didn't matter from invisibility that needs to be significantly shortened. And something that was weird to get used to is her dagger uh, didn't have any fall. There was no gravity attached to it. And it was basically hit scan. It was a projectile, but it was fast. So yeah. that thing like you clicked and it was basically at the end already. Um, and that thing, it was nuts. So definitely needs to look at there. But Shinbi was insane yeah. during this weekend, too. That's the one I was going to say. That's the other one I was thinking of. <laughs> Old That's Bora. She, yeah. Old oh, yeah, Bora. Bora. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I decimated every time I played her. I didn't get to play her a whole lot because I was mainly playing support. Which, by the way, Steel's Bull Rush was also hit scan. And, uh, which is nuts. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> but, uh, yeah. it, was, it was disorienting man like i i i would do that and i would like forget where i'm at I'm like which which way should i look like it was so fast man it was like a blink yeah it really was it, i mean all the dashes were uh feng bao's mm -hmm. dash grux's dash everything was super fast it, like everything was pumped up it was like paragon on crack i hate saying that because everybody else was like oh it's on crack but Oh, I didn't know. I've never spoken about Dash was, I think, <laughs> the one that caught me the most off guard with its distance and speed. Yeah. Because in Paragon, Severog's Dash was not very long and it was slow because he's yeah. a big hulking thing, right? And this was this was the complete opposite. It was huge and it was instantaneous. Yeah. So you're looking at Severog one second and suddenly just, whoop, there he is. He's gone. <laughs> well, where, where did he go? I have no idea. Like, <laughs> may as well have turned invisible for one thing. I, now, I felt Shimbi's dash was too long. Like, it was too long oh, to yeah. effectively use in battle. Like, I remember playing her in Paragon, and it was a short dash. So you could dash through somebody, turn around, dash back through them for that, for the damage part of her dash. Once you dashed in, you were <laughs> in, in Overprime, you were done. You were out of there. It took, a, it took some doing to dash back into them. But, yeah, I think I, that's who I felt was very strong. I didn't think uh, Kayla or... Kalari was all that strong 
Mainly, I guess, because of the sport per perspective. I was just... It, I mean, oh, yeah. I was able to actually interrupt her and then put down a ward, and we were able to kill her a lot in mm -hmm. a lot of games that I played. Whereas, you know, Paragon Kalari, she would deal a bunch of damage, and then if she got CC'd, she would just flip the hell away, and you'd never see her again until she was back to full health. Whereas this time, I felt that we could effectively shut her down. Um, mm -hmm. And that's... You had a good point in your video that you made, too, that you released, I think it was today, Mangus, of that Kalari... And we talked about this before either for For the Minions or ETE. We talked about Kalari didn't... She had the way to get in, do damage, and get out. In this game, she doesn't. She is get in, do damage, and hope you get out. Because if right. they if they turn on you at all after your ultimate, you're done. And I think that was a really good thing to see because it made me as the player have to pick my engages very carefully. Because I know I, if I'm going to go in and I'm going to take one person with me, I have to make sure I'm taking the right person right right because if i do not if i don't and i just die then it's all downhill from there i'll tell you what was hell was that last game we played and it was and you and i were playing that game jelly and i was playing adc and the enemy team had a kalari and a countess mm -hmm. and they would just both dump their kits on me at the same time and it was just i couldn't play yeah <laughs> and we had a steel that got forced into playing support and didn't want to play that role so he just wasn't, you know, doing anything about it. <laughs> so ugh, that was a struggle. I am curious what you guys think. What did you guys think of having invisible bushes around the map? I really liked it. I thought I was going to absolutely hate it. I loved it. I loved the outplay of it and just the way watching the way people use them. It was mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of cool. Yeah, um, I definitely liked it. Uh, it was a, uh, a moment where I was carry um, and there's those bushes right on top, right above the, uh, the, uh, the gold buff or whatever. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't, didn't even care what it was. I was just getting objectives. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, um, so I was sit right there and the enemy knew I was in there. Like, obviously they watched me walk in, but I, I just dropped down and they never noticed because they was worrying about minions and everything. I just got the buff, walked back up. Like, mm -hmm. it's a lot of different ways you can use the uh, that environment where you can just, you know, go and viz and, and outplay people. Yeah, open up a lot of opportunities. Yeah, I think it was really cool. One issue with the bushes, I guess I should say, is if you played on the lowest settings, it actually removed the bushes. Oh, really? And you could see people that were supposed to be invisible <laughs> because their bush, the bushes were removed. <laughs> so that's something they have to obviously look at and that's yeah. a setting they have to change. But yeah, it was just like, oh, well, that's <laughs> not okay. And that's why, and that was, being on low settings actually gave you an advantage against anything that was invisible because it made it stick out significantly more. That's kind of funny. So by the end of the weekend, I definitely noticed that on Kayla, People were just being like, oh, he's invisible right there. Bang. And I was like, what? I, wh how did you see me? What the heck? I'm right here. <laughs> uh, so that was interesting that over time, people clearly were putting the settings lower to get that <laughs> competitive edge. <laughs> I suddenly went from being like, nobody could see me ever to almost every time I was invisible, I was being found without being revealed by anything. What a way to screw over content creators. It's like, oh, you want to... <laughs> You want to bring the highest quality to your to your audience? Too bad. If you want Too to bad. play well. <laughs> yep. <laughs> especially, especially the Paragon content creators, because most of them are super highly competitive. So it's, if that's yeah. the competitive edge you have to get, they'll They're lower dude, it. lower it all down. What about improvements, Jay? What improvements would you like to see them make going forward? Um, man. Uh, like I said, this this game absolutely blew me away, though. Um. So I would say um, more balancing. I know, uh, man, you should probably, I think you mentioned this in your video, uh, but um, the prime going mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. the lanes needs yeah. to scale better. It was just like laughable sometimes how fast <laughs> he'd just be gone. It was like, okay, well, that prime was useless. You know what I mean? But uh, other times it was like, um, what else? I would change the speed a little bit. I do think it's still a tad too fast. Um, the games would either go really quick or really long. Like, 
if people knew what they were doing and, and probably had some type of experience with Paragon, it seems like the games will last much longer. Like I'll have mm -hmm. better matchups and everything. I'm just like, okay, this is, but for the people that was just like trying the game, oh, you can stomp them out in 15, 20 minutes. Like, but yeah, so there's some balancing that needs to be done there. Um, I don't know which front to tackle first, but yeah, definitely think that some balancing is still required. That's a really good point because usually with a MOBA, the more experienced and better teams are, the faster that game's going to go. I found the opposite to be true with Overprime. The better teams I was facing, the longer the matches would go because we would get to full build. Nobody was really afraid of Prime. So and Darkly, our friend, uh, told me, he was, yeah. he's like, he said he just got into E mode with Murdoch, the one where you kneel down and fire long range shots. He said he, he just kneel down and burn the prime down before it could even reach the tower from complete safety which is just messed up yeah like that yeah, shouldn't yeah. be possible he called it the uh artillery strike yeah <laughs> <laughs> jelly what would you improve about over prime i think the the they need to find a better end game device whatever that is whether it's making prime stronger faster as you take him um letting you choose what lane to drop it in, letting you choose when to activate it. So it's not just when you dunk, it activates and you're screwed. Uh, because the problem with that way that works is you're in this weird position most of the time of you've dunked the orb and now it's already shoving down the mid lane. And so now if you were engaged in a fight over the orb dunk, you're probably too low to head mid and go help the prime. Or you're in a weird position where you have to run through the enemy jungle and can get into a fight before you can make it to the mid lane. To go help Prime. It, honestly, if they added a 10 second reset window before the Prime spawned, that even it just stays mid, make it a little bit stronger, add a 10 second reset window where your team can back and then push with the Prime. Yeah. I think that'd be huge. I would also love being able to pick what lane it pushes. Mm -hmm. That'd be really nice. I've seen that happen in other MOBAs like that have that sort of mechanic that you can pick which lane it goes down. And even um, if they didn't want like a UI attached to it, put three slightly separated dunk spots ooh, and good each idea. one is lane. That'd be awesome. And I so think, then you can do yeah. it that way where it's a really direct, choose. take it to the one you want. Mm -hmm. But if you're desperate, you just go to the closest one. <laughs> like, you got somebody on your ass. <laughs> oh, uh, there's one other thing um, with in terms of like uh, improvements. Um, the ping system, I like it. I, I, I get what they're doing. It's kind of making it more like a um, like a shooter type ping. It's like, okay, attack here, and you can just you know visually see something. Mm -hmm. um, but I still would like, and I don't know if I just didn't find it during my playtime, but like um, the ping, like, you know, defend mid, uh, you know, the, the classic type of uh, call outs to where, you know, the whole team just knows, you know what I mean? Instead of like kind of mm -hmm. look around and be like, oh, the ping's over there. Like, I think it seems, needs to be a little bit more uh communication in terms of like call outs mm -hmm. I, th I think that wheel was there it was just very confusing to use i tried to use it a few times and just couldn't find what i wanted to say before it was too late and i said fuck it and moved on <laughs> exactly and, <laughs> i don't think they were obvious enough for your teammates yeah because there were several times that i would ping black buff the ritual beast whatever we want to call this thing prime spirit <laughs> uh that i would ping that and try to get the, the duo lane, which is literally right there. Just walk this way. Come help me with this thing. And they'd just be like, ah, now we're pushing our lane. It's like, do you not see the pings? What? I'm like spam pinging as many times as I can. And that, so I wish they were a little more obvious for other, other teammates as well. I would say that Prime Spirit Guardian was a more essential take than the Prime. 100%. Because once you stacked a couple of those up. Oh, go ahead, Joey. Yeah. If you got to the fifth one and you got that extra 20% damage to towers and objectives, then that was a way better thing to have than the orb prime buff. Yeah. Or the orb prime pushing all in. Yeah, definitely. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I experienced no toxicity whatsoever throughout the entire weekend. Did, did any, any of you guys? And I haven't heard anybody complain about it either none i don't think i did actually i, I, don't, I didn't I, think about that at I all honestly i don't think i did 
I honestly think everybody was just having way too much fun to care. I hope that's what it was, yeah. Yeah. That's fucking weird. I was having fun losing, guys. I lost two matches in a row, and it was like over some dumb stuff. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I would say the only matches I didn't have fun losing, granted I won more than I lost, but the only matches I didn't have fun losing were the ones that drug out to an hour and 10 minutes. Yeah. Where it just it just felt like a dragging on match. It's like, just somebody win the game <laughs> at this point. You win, I win, I don't care. I would say, okay, so I actually have two more improvements that I just thought of. Death timers. If you're going to let games potentially go that long, those death timers need to increase even further. 80 seconds is not long enough. Ooh, that's going to be a, that's a hot hour. take. Oh, so <laughs> thinking about this, we get to 80 seconds very quickly, which is fine, right? If the game is at that point where it's teetering, 80 seconds is plenty. But when you get to that stalemate section, 80 seconds is nothing. Yeah. Right. There is there is nothing going on in 80 seconds because it takes you too long to push the minions down the lane that you can do anything effective by that time. So they need to I think they need to have thresholds that if you reach 80 seconds, I don't know what the metric is. If you if 80 second death timers are met at 20 minutes, right, then at 30 every 10 minutes, then thereafter adds 15 more seconds. Right. Because then you don't have this weird endless drag going on you at least if you're getting to the 30 40 50 minutes you have death timers of over two minutes now and that means a team should be able to definitively go and push the game and end make make deaths and picks more more impactful yeah, yeah because 80 if you get a pick i would do it all the time on kayla if i get a pick in a side lane on kayla the enemy team would just turtle for 80 seconds and then come back out and it was fine yeah because we couldn't push anywhere fast enough. they All they had to do was not die, and that was fine. That's all they needed to do. And a repercussion of only having two towers was that the towers themselves were mm -hmm. a lot stronger than they would normally be, so it made it harder to push them down. Yeah. And another one that I would love to see is lower the knockups. Like, the <laughs> knockups knock people so high, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and, I mean, Mangus, we had this problem a couple times of if I was jumping on somebody, you'd knock them up, and I literally could do zero damage to them because they were so high yeah. in the air. I just had to sit there and twiddle my thumbs for three seconds waiting for them to come back down, which feels terrible. Yeah. Uh, the other one is Kalari can't hit Gideon while he's ulting at all. Yeah. Because she gets sucked so far into the center of that black hole that she can't basic attack upwards far enough to hit him <laughs> and it's the most frustrating thing on the planet you're just sitting there taking damage for nothing feels terrible but yeah i would love to see knockups brought brought way way down uh my biggest problem with the knockups was i kept getting people stuck on top of my head and i couldn't do anything to them mm -hmm. i had a shimbi at literally five health on top of my head and i couldn't hit her and she just stayed on top of my freaking scott dome until she had her blink up and then blinked away. Like, how fucked up is that? <laughs> Damn. The way I see it, you should never have someone knocked up so far that they go off of your screen if you were fighting them. <laughs> right? And I, that happened to me constantly. I'd see, I mean, Mangus on Scott would knock somebody up and I would be like, hopefully they come back down eventually. <laughs> but uh, I have no idea where they are. So, so many yeah. people got away from me because they got knocked up and I couldn't mm -hmm. find them. Yep. Yeah. It, that was frustrating because it was like it was a done deal. You know what I mean? They shouldn't have survived. Yet there they go. <laughs> I'm still sorry for. I had two people chasing me and I ulted to get away from them and just went to the center of the map. I was like all the way in one of the side lanes. Were you with me yet? That's how jelly. I just went. You ulted and I saw your your thing go. Whoop. I was, like, what? Okay. I was like, those guys chasing me must be very confused right now. <laughs> And we had somebody in mid lane. I wonder if they saw me just suddenly appear. <laughs> like, where the hell did that steal come from? Oh my gosh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the no toxicity. They did put out the message saying like they weren't going to tolerate it, and, and if you're toxic, there you know we're gonna, there were going to be repercussions and stuff. But I, I again, I don't think anybody really heeded that message. It's just people just weren't being toxic, mm -hmm. which is makes me think I'm in the fucking twilight zone. Like <laughs> this shit didn't I really think happen. I think the most toxic anybody got was our last game, Mangus, with that Scott that got put into support 
unwillingly. Yeah, yeah, and, then, and, that, and that, mean, was, that wasn't bad. No, not at all. Like, in terms of toxicity, that was the basis level of toxicity. <laughs> yeah, like, he tried to dodge, and then mm -hmm. it wouldn't let him dodge, so he was like, usually at that point, they would just AFK in Fountain, but he fucking he bought his out. items and came out. Yeah. Came and played. Oh, shit. All right, so I think I think we, we got to stop talking about the closed beta test now. Let's move on to other stuff that we haven't talked about yet. Mainly Rena, which they announced was going to be a new character in the game. They didn't say hero. They said character in the game. They had her dancing around. She's got a little Instagram page and all that craziness. I still don't know what to make of this. I really I think she's just going to be like a community hostess sort of thing. Like she'll introduce heroes or some craziness like that i have no idea jay what do you think what do you think of this arena situation um yeah like i said uh she's borderline creepy uh she yeah. looks <laughs> she looks really really good in terms of rendering like uh they did a really good job on her but those instagram pics man they're, they're it was freaking me out. i had to get off that page as soon as possible but um it's yeah, too real it it's too real um but yeah it looks like she's gonna be uh kind of like you said uh community face you know like uh i, I think that really kind of fits her because you know and during this announcement it was kind of like her announcement you know mm -hmm. what i mean and you know they did the dance and all that good stuff yeah so we'll probably see more of that stuff in the future and we already know that they have adele planned as the new hero so to not have adele playable and not know anything about adele but already be introducing rena seems <laughs> yeah. kind of like a weird transition um, but Adele was all over the promotional art, so it's not like she doesn't exist anymore. So it's a, it's a weird thing, but maybe, here we go, tinfoil hat theory. What if Rena is the new improved or prime, that she's the end game, that she'll just <laughs> go out there on the field, start dancing around and distract the whole enemy team so you can win the game? There you go. There you, you go. Happen. That's what she's going to do. Happen. I mean, anytime you got a game <laughs> where the big blue guy's named Scott, I mean, anything's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's a cool thing. Like, like we talked about last week, the aesthetic doesn't really fit. Like, she's too real for the game. But um, maybe with Unreal Engine 5, they could import her in. Who knows? I really just, I don't think she's going to be a hero. I think she's just going to be the creepy Instagram girl. <laughs> yeah, the, that it's too real. It, it, it mm -hmm. freaks me out just a little tiny bit. Because some of the pictures you can tell, and other ones, there ain't no fucking way I could... <laughs> That's something we didn't talk about, actually. The skins. What were you guys' thoughts on Overprime skins for all the characters? Oh, man, they were awesome. I love the fact that they just allowed you to just, you know, try out everything. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Man, dude, I, there are so many skins. Like you said, Mangusa, that um, that steel skin is awesome. Oh, uh, I didn't really get a good look at it in the video. I was like, oh, yeah, it, look, it looks pretty cool. But when you get in a game and, and spin that dude around, you're like, dude, that is sick. Like they are, they're yeah. adding so many things to these skins. It's just like, dude, it's like, how can you not take my money, man? Just here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just here. You deserve it. And that's, they even, not only did they have really good original skins, but they also took some of the, the old Paragon skins and made them 10 times better than they were. The one that sticks out to me is Sparrow's Black Swan skin or whatever it is. That thing in Overprime is so much better than it was in Paragon. It's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Like the the purple accents all over it just looks so good. Yeah, uh, they just, I mean, all the skins though were incredible. They did a lot of texture updates for the for even the mm -hmm. base skins for the heroes. And then of course Shimmy just got flat out just got a facelift. So did uh Twin Blast. His face was different too. Yeah. Was it? That Channing yeah. Tatum looking motherfucker. Yeah. Um <laughs> Kwong, he, he he looked a lot different. Mm -hmm. but yeah, their skins were incredible. Uh, the ones that like really stick out to me, the Demoria skin or Severog skin, that was all gold. That thing, I've, I'm sorry, that is one of the best skins I've ever seen in <laughs> any game. Sick. Flat out, that was sick. <laughs> Such a good skin. Uh, the Rampage Rampage skin, um, where he was the gorilla the with the gold planetary armor, escape. Such a cool, such a yeah. cool skin as well. I mean, yeah, they did an incredible job with a lot of those. Oh, you see that Fang Mao skin? <laughs> that dude, one, I, yes, did, I, did. I didn't like that dude, one. Dude, I was like, what is going <laughs> on? There's so much stuff going on. I was that like, was a skin man. for me right yeah. there. <laughs> <laughs> the what? It was 
crazy, man. My description of that was it looks like a jester fucked a cockroach. Mm -hmm. I did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the little tentacles. <laughs> little feelers and shit. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't much care for that one. But, but a vast majority of the skins they made, like, I didn't like the Murdoch skin, didn't like the Twin Blast skin, but that's just all aesthetics and matter of opinion. I'm sure people did enjoy those skins. I think just overall, though, like, these aren't just really good skins for Paragon. These are just really cool concepts and skins for any game period mm -hmm. like it's fucking badass like props to them for that so i guess another, the elephant in the room though we have to talk about loot boxes Ooh, that scares yeah. me that scares the, me the same thing happened with paragon the cool skins got locked behind loot boxes as long the problem with the paragon with that started with the thing mal Ancestral mm -hmm. Guardian skin or whatever it was called. Yeah. And it was only available via loot boxes. You couldn't just purchase the premium currency and buy the skin straight up. You had to get that out of a loot box. And, I mean, you saw streamers and stuff buying like 100 loot boxes trying to get that skin and not getting it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's And loot boxes are the gotcha system as a whole. Is very popular in the east, but is very unpopular in the <laughs> oh, west. Oh yeah, so it's one of those things, right? Of it's a dangerous. To me, that is the most concerning thing coming out of this weekend. Is what's going to be locked behind the loot box? What the r roll rate of these things is going to be behind the loot box, and how much those loot boxes are going to cost? Yeah, because that that's almost a make or break for me, man. I, I mm -hmm. am. Uh, I don't spend money on loot boxes man <laughs> yeah. you know i want to buy something that i know i'm getting that's it i don't, I don't need no surprise mechanics man i don't <laughs> none, of that, none of that's getting me excited to play video games you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, i spend my money to get content you know what i mean mm -hmm. that's it you know i'm not going to buy something that i don't know if i'm getting it or not and we know we can get duplicates because their loot boxes for this weekend contain duplicates yep so that's another worry is that oh. great commons have a 95% drop rate. You're just going to get a whole bunch of common skins all day long. I'm so upset at the design team. They're so good at those skins, man. They're going to get, know. People. they're that's going to get people if they do, do that, man. It's, it's a money pit. It's a money pit. Man. You know, all of those gold skins that they had, like the highest tier skins, they're all going behind that loot box. You oh. know, it's going to happen. I, I wouldn't mind that as much. Is it? But what I would really, really mind is if they had items behind loot boxes like Paragon did. Oh yeah, please yeah. don't. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, that was the down. That was a real downfall of Paragon. No, just stupid. Hot, hot take. I loved Paragon's original item system. Me I think too. it was a really cool idea to have people bring in their own deck of items that they yeah. had to choose from. But the worst part about it was that loot box. Yeah, it was because if you it didn't have a broken so card, you were just SOL. Yeah. It didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, it took so long to get the whole deck. You're just mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh. Man. It took them forever to implement crafting, too. And even after the crafting was implemented, it took a it lot of mats to make yeah. anything you wanted. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, yeah, and it was too late. Uh, let's see. I think, uh, other than the crunch skin concepts, which we we touched on <laughs> last week, but that's that seems like such small potatoes in the light of Shit. the entire CBT. But th th this still really cool skin concepts and we've seen how fast these go from skin concept to in game and we have seen crunch displayed on their map which yeah. so they've, they've obviously been working on crunch and that's most of the skins we've talked about that have been concepts the last couple weeks were all in the test so yeah. I mean which was crazy but you know I mean it's the same style of skin the crunch skin is the same style as Colt's skin or twin blast uh, highest skin so I bet it's going to be Crunch's highest skin so it's another one of those potential loot box things mm. which makes me sad let's let's just hope that we can buy them straight up and don't have to mm -hmm. fuck with the loot yeah. boxes maybe we should at least have options well, let's move on from Overprime we've been talking about them for a while now uh, <laughs> y'all got anything else you wanted to say about OP um yeah sure one more thing we're just going <laughs> to slide this in uh, I did have a issue where after like one or two games, my game would hard crash, and I had to mm, restart. Oh, wow. so I, I I'm like the only person I know 
that was having crashes. Everyone else had a, a fantastic time. You know, good for them. <laughs> <laughs> good for Almost them. Spiteful. <laughs> Just I'm a super little. happy for you guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Super happy. <laughs> All right, y'all ready to move on to Ethereal? Yeah, yeah let's do Ethereal. So Ethereal Ethereal. also had their open weekend this weekend. Didn't go quite as long as the um that were actually I think it went about as long as the over as the overprime one, but it, uh, they did have to end it early. Um, but the good news is there was just way more people playing Ethereal this weekend than. Mm-hmm. have been recently which is great news in light of the overprime closed beta test also going on at the same time that there were so many people also playing ethereal so that's um freaking awesome i i played it uh quite a bit um not as much as i played overprime i think but mainly because overprime is like the new hotness and i have played ethereal for a couple weekends now um jay did you get a chance to play ethereal this weekend sadly I did not. Oh. Um, my mm-hmm. client kept crashing, and then when I finally got in, I got you know uh, the people were queuing up. You know, hit everybody's hitting the ready button. It was always like one or two people that just never hit the ready button, and I did it for <laughs> like an hour on like oh, uh, cause man because I, I work. You know, I I had work this weekend, so it, it kind of sucked for me. But um, when was it Friday night? I tried to hop on, and that's when they had the big surge. So I was like, okay. Um, I tried for an hour. I was like, okay. Uh, come back tomorrow. Tomorrow, uh, the yes, uh, the next day, I got into a match, and then it crashed. <sighs> Unfortunately, so yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to the next uh, open weekend, um, but I did not get a chance to play it yet. Yeah. So just tell Jelly to get his shit together. Yeah, I'm it's sorry, all, man. It's all good, man. It's all They've good, been working man. me crazy hours to fix it. I haven't been able to leave my desk. <laughs> uh, that is, we know a lot of people had issues like that, and so I apologize, Jay, that you had those issues too. Um, that's basically that system of how the matchmaking was working has been a consistent issue for us and is basically getting redone from the ground up because there's something in there that is not working. And so it just is one of those things of just, it needs to be torn down, put the bricks back in the correct order and have it work from here on out. So that's a big thing for us is that that's one of the things we're working on right now. Uh, But overall, we basically doubled the numbers from the previous test, which is insane. We had twice as, we had twice as many accounts created as before we had basically to almost twice as many people playing actively in games the whole nine yards like it was it was insane for us to see that especially during the overprime weekend where theoretically it would have been lower than what it could have been if the overprime weekend wasn't happening at the same time no um i i, I was able to get into a few matches um i did have the problem at the very beginning uh, on friday of trying to get in and wasn't able to log in but um but you know everybody readying up but nobody ever actually never actually getting into a match but the the games that i played were fantastic i just love ethereal so much again like you said jay even when like like you said with uh over prime even when you're losing you're still having a good time and there's still cool shit you can do to help your team out and that's um just really enjoying the game i can't wait to see more myths added into it and um, more of the like the general chat still needs to be added. There's a lot of stuff you guys need to do, but uh, yeah, for for a pre-alpha for just a really base start, it's looking good. It is looking good. Yeah, and we're working on a roadmap right now actually to put out to the community that will update as things actually get completed. So it'll be on the website. Um, that'll go over exactly what we're working on in priority order of stuff so it, you the community will be able to better gauge what is coming and when and all those things man i think uh, a lot of uh development teams uh take that for granted uh that roadmap really keep your community just sitting right there waiting man you, you get so much more patience and understanding from the community when you do that so i'm glad i'm glad you guys are doing a roadmap and uh looking forward to it yeah yeah, even when things go wrong, as long as you've been told this is what they're trying to work on, I think it gives you a, a more of a warm fuzzy. Mm-hmm. 
Absolutely. And something that you guys don't know, because I'm going to surprise you with it right now, uh, is we will actually have be having a live community corner on... Oh, uh, goodness. Now I need to know the date, don't I? <laughs> that would be on nice. February 5th. Okay. So Saturday, February 5th, it'll be a week and a day from when this airs. The announcement will be going out the same day as this airs. But so we'll have a live community corner going over this most recent stress test, some of the figures from that, and then new information and all that kind of stuff. Right on. Nice. So uh, one thing I noticed about Ethereal this time, the balance seemed to be improved. Iran wasn't as oppressive as he was <laughs> before, but he was still good. He was still really good. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, the bow of hysteria or whatever the hell it's called, Medusa's string. That wasn't nearly as impressive as it was, mm -hmm. as, a, as oppressive as it used to be. Um, so, yeah, you guys are learning, adjusting, and, and carrying forward. And I just think the pacing for Ethereal is just on point because games almost always last that 30 to 45 minute time frame. Mm -hmm. Almost every single game I play, they don't hardly ever go over that. They don't really go under that. And it's nice being able to know when you queue in that that's probably about how long you're going to be playing. Mm hmm. And part of that is our death timers. Our death timers <laughs> get long and they basically scale endlessly, right? So it hits, there are points in the game where you're like, wow, 105 second death timer. Okay, great. Like uh, I should not have died there. And it's, that's what helps you push and end the game and get those games over with, which just, is the whole point. I found it Take interesting moves. that like over prime with two towers and an inhibitor, the inhibitor even really didn't do much or not the inhibitor, the core didn't really even do much. Mm -hmm. Took so long to close out a match sometimes. However, Ethereal has three fucking towers per lane, then a spire, then a core that's a living being that attacks you <laughs> and will uh -huh. fuck you up. Was easier. It was easier to close out a game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so weird to me. And the map is like <laughs> so much bigger too. You would think it would be so much harder, but yeah, just... It just goes to show the kind of weird balancing things that go into a game and some of the stuff that will affect um, game time in a negative or positive mm -hmm. manner. And, and you never really know until you get in there and hash it out. Yeah, I think absolutely. a lot of the things Overprime did to speed their game up ended up slowing it down. And um, Ethereal has somehow gotten the formula correct and hopefully that'll uh, that'll stay moving forward. And I really didn't have anything else for Ethereal. The Marina Myth theme came out um, since the last time we did an FTM and that amazing theme. I really, really <laughs> love that. And then um, the account creation. Um, you guys just did early account creation before this the, the open weekend even started, which gave people the opportunity to download the game before it went live. And um, yeah, which is good stuff all around. Impressed us to no end to see how many people made an account and downloaded the game before it even went live it was really cool to see. I was going in and taking metrics every day of like, wow, we've created a ton of accounts. Holy crap. Like it was really, really cool to see. Um, I think the, the biggest complaint I've seen is people saying that it's just difficult to learn. Yeah. So y'all go have to get that, get hot on that tutorial. Y'all <laughs> did the videos. That ain't good enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna watch them videos. We want to end game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys have anything else to say about uh, Ethereal before we move on? No. All right, let's move on to Fault. Uh, a lot's happened since uh, since we last talked about Fault. Uh, mainly, they added Feng Mao to the game, along with uh, some uh, other balance patches and such. Uh the main thing I think I like about their addition of Feng Mao is I think they announced it at the correct time. They actually made a good decision in their marketing. Mm -hmm. Like if they would have released Feng Mao during the Ethereal Open Weekend and the Overprime Closed Beta, nobody would have noticed and it just <laughs> like would have been a drop in the bucket. I like that they announced it now, but he's actually going to get released. Well, he's released today as 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 we're. Uh, recording this so mm -hmm. i think that was a i think that was a good move on their part for once um jay what do you think about the addition of feng mao default um it is awesome i like feng mao uh yeah. he seems a little broken but 
I can't wait to get in there and, uh, you know, try him out. Uh, I do like Feng Mao, and uh, I think he's going to be a good addition. Uh, I think we do need a little bit more of a, a get in, get out type of character. Mm -hmm. And from their uh, sort of community corner post, uh, what Sylphan was saying, he's meant to be more of a melee carry than a bruiser. Like he's going to scale pretty hard, but be relatively squishy. Yeah, they wanted him to be like a true duelist from what they were saying in their live stream, which I think is a, is a good thing to have for them because they don't have, most of their melees are bruisers. And so they don't have a kind of squishy melee character. And I think Feng Mao could easily fit in that niche. Yeah, he's got that little bit of survivability with the shielding, which is on the correct key. And then <laughs> he's got both a, an engage and an escape with his dash. Jelly, what are you talking about? Dude. <laughs> Big Mouse abilities and what a... I hate it. I'm so mad about this for some reason. <laughs> I, so, in Paragon, but after Kalari, Feng Mao was easily my next biggest main. So I played a lot of Feng Mao in Paragon. I played a lot of Feng Mao in Predecessor when I have played it. I played Feng Mao in Overprime this weekend. Right? So Feng Mao is a kit that I know dear, near and dear to my heart. And for whatever reason, Fault switched his dash to be his Q and his shield to be his right click. And that not only frustrates me because it's different than it always has been, <laughs> but it doesn't even match up with their theme of uh, movement abilities on the rest of their heroes because their movement abilities are almost, I think, pretty exclusively on E or right click. And now we have a random movement ability on Q. Yeah. And to me, it just seemed like an arbitrary, like, we're different kind of change <laughs> for no reason other than that. Drives me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you were saying you didn't like it either, right? Um, Yeah, yeah, I'm not used to uh, um, Q being some type of escape or anything like that. It's usually like my, my damage ability. You know yeah. what I mean? That's it's some type of damage ability and my escape or or type of some type of movement is, is usually on the... The, the click, right click. So I don't, I don't know. It's, it's, it's going to be weird. I did have a Master Fing Malskin in Paragon, and I will say that I played him better than Jelly, even though I have no idea. What? And uh, <laughs> them fighting words, man. Goose, we're going in one v one today. Let Fing Mal be Fing Mal. Let him go. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I actually kind of like it because I don't know. I just equate his. I, I, I equate Q's with iconic best abilities for a hero, and I equate his dash with his best ability for some reason. That for some reason when I think of his dash, I think Q. But I, I don't know. I just got a I got a weird brain. Everybody knows so, that. <laughs> what that means is Mangoose is saying that when Boris snorts a line of coke, that's his best ability <laughs> in the game, because that's his Q. So you know, may as well be. <laughs> It this is. Why, that is, is his best it's ability, good. isn't it? I mean, it's pretty good, but... <laughs> What's that, Jay? This is twice Coke has been brought up. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was crack before. They're different. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jay, can you give us I another need, example uh, of what Boris's Q is? Because uh, that's no, the only thing I've never seen. No, that was perfect. No, that was perfect. I mean, you know, he just gets all weird and crazy. Eye gets red and he just goes out. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Got a bag of Ursa Major. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they ju they've just been doing kind of an overall overhaul to the game to make range a little less impactful and make melee heroes a little stronger, specifically bruiser and tankier heroes mm -hmm. uh, a bit stronger, which I personally, it's been nice for me because that's what I play is uh, I like to play bruisey, bruiser, tanky heroes. Even if I'm playing like a support like Decker, I'll still build her you know, fairly armor heavy so that I can give that armor to my, to my allies and, um, you know, soak up some damage during team fights. So I personally have zero problem with the direction they're heading with fault, but, uh, I don't know. Let's get you guys' opinion. What do you think, Jay? Um, well, I like Harry. I do, man. And, you know, for the longest time, that's, that was like my main role that I like to play. Um, with fault less and less each day um <laughs> it's it's i feel like it's already kind of hard 
for uh for you know carries you gotta be like very on point with your last hits i mean you miss a minion and you're behind man it is like very fine-tuned so this um basically kind of like a nerf is kind of not what i want but i understand why they're doing it like you said bruisers do need a little bit more power because you know sometimes i'm fighting with graystone and i am just like you know a, a meat shield i can't hit nothing though i'll hit like a whoopee cushion you know people are just not i didn't it didn't feel good you know what i mean i, right. I was taking a lot of damage but wasn't really doing much for my team besides that so i see the direction they're going um i'm definitely going to be hopping on tonight see how everything feels though Jelly, what do you think? I think it's a good direction. Fault has always had a problem with ranged carries dominating every lane. And yes. that they, they can do whatever they want, whenever they want, because that's who they are. And so I think it's good that we're finally seeing that transition slightly away from that. And I think this potentially could be the first like real meta shift in Fault. Right? In other MOBAs, you see the meta shifts constantly that between patches, you could have an all carry meta to suddenly an all tank meta or whatever it may be. I think this is probably one of the first times we've seen a huge shift in that that could potentially alter the way the game's played for a little while. And um, I kind of, it's unfortunate that ADCs, that duo lane ADCs are kind of being punished for the transgressions of off lane ADCs. Like mm -hmm. people love to play the off lane Murdoch or the off lane grim and uh or just anything ranged off lane and i feel like adcs are kind of being punished for that which sort of sucks but they gotta fix it somehow because it's just it's very oppressive whenever you go against ranged with a melee off laner yeah. and it sort of forces you to have to pick ranged in the off lane which mm -hmm. it, you never want people to be forced into into something when playing the game and we saw that when the game initially came out, we, there was a huge problem with Muriel offlane. Yeah. And that Muriel was a better carry than most carries. And so they nerfed Muriel really hard because of it and punished support Muriel players because of the transgressions of offlane Muriel players. And so I feel like there's a better way to do that. And that's they probably need to look at shifting the balance slightly to keep the strength in the carries, but also make everybody else feel their own kind of strength. Uh, but that's that's a pretty massive change in, in balance that you have to do almost across the board. Everybody would have to get tweaked in some way to kind of find a better middle ground than just the seesaw of this gets nerfed and this gets buffed. I think right now, too, right now is the time for Fall to really push hard with updates mm -hmm. and hero releases and stuff because Overprime's closed beta test have, has brought much of the Paragon community back and has brought Paragon back into the minds of people that haven't thought about it since it closed down. Mm -hmm. So now's the time for them to actually snatch some of those people up because they maybe they play that the Overprime closed beta test. They want some more, and then they're like, "Oh wait, there's another game out there, and it's and like I could just buy it and play it every day." Um, that would be really good for them because that's God, that's their biggest failing is the the low player count because right now, whoa. Screen went black for blank for a second. <laughs> right now, if if you if you buy a fault, and I, I'm I'm doing a differences video right now. That's one of the things I mentioned about fault. Yeah, in theory, you could play it 24 seven. In reality, mm -hmm. you gotta wait till about if you want to play in on on your servers, you have to wait until like a certain time at night, and for you know about five or six hours, you'll be able to get into a match. But if like if I tried to queue up in default at 10 a.m my time mountain time uh it would uh <laughs> it wouldn't um yeah i wouldn't be able to get into a match i would have to play mm -hmm. pve and i mean a big thing that we saw with overprime this weekend overprime doubled fault's highest player count on their first weekend yeah and that's that's a scary that should be terrifying to fault because if they in their first soiree went out and doubled your highest ever player count that's not a good sign Maybe because it's free. <coughs> Which is part of it, to be sure. Absolutely. Uh, the good thing is Fault has seen an increase in their daily average players since the Overprime test. Which So I think definitely there's some of that where people are getting the Paragon itch now. And they're, well, what's available right now? Fault is. 
And I think I absolutely agree. Fault should lean into that really hard at the moment. They should lean in that because Overprime showed more people that this game exists or that the the Paragon successors exist, Fault should be out there saying, we are the only one in town right now. Come play us, come do the thing. But they have to have their game on point before they do that. We can't have another free weekend for Fault's debacle where the optimization is terrible. It, the, the game really is good. Like, there's nothing wrong with Fault. Like, people... Oh, I've seen so many people shit on Fault, and I feel so bad for them because they have a good product. It's just that they don't have enough people playing it, and they seem to only market the game whenever it's at its lowest point. And it's like, mm -hmm. what the fuck are you guys doing? <laughs> it's like the weirdest mistakes with that. But, yeah. Overall, though, like, Fault is a pretty damn good game. They Everything's... Fairly well balanced, really good gameplay loop, game time, the game time lasts, you know, just as much well as you you would think. There's not, there's like, you know, some bugs and shit, of course, but there's, I mean, there was always bugs in Paragon too. But I just think mm -hmm. Fault gets a bad rap. I was especially a little butthurt seeing like some of the streamers out there talking shit about Fault while they were streaming over Prime. And it's like, bro, you haven't played this shit either ever. Or since, like, a year and a half ago, like, you, you don't really get to say that it's a shit game if you haven't played it. No. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just me no, I agree with you. And it's even some of the hardcore fault streamers where we're doing that kind of stuff. It's like, that's a dangerous ground to stand on, right? <laughs> where you're kind of like, oh, the new thing's out, so that thing I used to play? Terrible. And then the second the, the new thing was gone, they went straight back to the old thing they were just calling crap the whole time. <laughs> right? Like, it's it was this weird, weird double standard sometimes. I would at least respect their opinion a little more, though, if they, they went from streaming Fault directly into streaming Overprime, because then at least they know Fault, they know what, what the problems are, and can articulate mm -hmm. those problems to people. But, man, yeah. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that uh, same way, uh, Man Goose, because it's like... I, I'm very critical of Fault. Like, I, I give Fault a lot of shit, man. But I also <laughs> want it to succeed a mm -hmm. lot. You know what I mean? Because there's, I think there's room for all these Paragon clones. You know what I mean? Because they're all going to be uniquely different in some way, shape, or form. Uh, we could, we experienced that with Overprime. Overprime is nothing like Fault. Right. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it feels completely different to me. And it's like, if, if Fault, like you said do better with his marketing and and time things correctly uh i think they can really uh you know start taking off um also with the new characters they're keep putting out so i think that's about all i had for fault unless you guys had anything else i think it's kind of what we've been saying for weeks now mangoose is that false marketing has to pick it up because it's only going to get harder for them yeah. As these other games release, if they don't have a solid base by then, it's only going to be harder. And the big one still hasn't dropped their feet. Mm -hmm. Let's move on but to them. But don't worry, the next time Ethereal announces <laughs> yeah. a test, we'll hear from Predecessor, I'm sure. I have good news for you, Jelly. Oh? I talked to Ruba, and he oh. specifically said that they will definitely do their best not to step on the toes of any of the other games whenever they're having like a free weekend or a closed beta or an alpha like that because it's a waste of everybody's time and resources and they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So hey, we did have a predecessor announcement. Nice. What? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, we, if that's just a Jelly Sanity announcement, yes, please. Yeah. I'll take it. That was nice. <laughs> no, it's just good, uh, good looking out from them and just smart, yeah. smart and maneuver from their part for the lack of a better way to put it the ethereal devs undying games and predecessor devs Ometa studios have always been kind to each other yeah. right we talk we talk a lot with each other we've had conversations in the past we've always been friendly we kind of being the for lack of a better way to put it the two kids on the block that have been around a while <laughs> right that yeah. we kind of look at each other like oh hey how's it going <laughs> right and then everybody else screw you guys yeah right <laughs> Um, so that's really nice to hear, actually. Uh, we'd love to have Smokey or whoever on this show if they want to come talk to us about Predecessor and give us more information. Just saying, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, Ruba uh, back on. Oh, by the way, that was just me and Ruba talking. That wasn't like an official Predecessor announcement that they were. I should probably stipulate says, that. 
Get your pitchforks ready because the next Ruba, time with you, you'll Ruba, make an announcement. Ruba does work for Omeda, but <laughs> that wasn't. He doesn't speak for Omeda. You mean O M E D A Mangoose? O M E D A Studios. <laughs> Jeez, what was that? Action esports? Oh yeah. my god, that triggered the fuck out of me. It's like if you're gonna do a video about it, fucking learn how to say the goddamn word. Uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, but whatever. Ethereal? Are you kidding me? Ethereal. 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 Oh yeah, I'm playing some ethereal this weekend, man. Man, that sounds like a medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I need my ethereal. Can you have like some sort of rabbit myth and call him the ether bunny? <laughs> At that. minimum, he's gonna have to have a skin called the Ether Bunny because that's brilliant, dude. That is man. Was that straight from the top, Mangoose? <laughs> it was straight oh, from the straight from the heart. Oh yeah, <laughs> we gotta get Kool Aid Manor on. <laughs> yes, we do. Oh, all right. Now, well, let's move on to the poll, which we I didn't do the poll again this week, but I do have an announcement out the poll. Uh, Monochromatic, uh, you may know him from um, Overprime's Discord, actually. He made this crazy awesome way to do the poll which lets you look back at the results of all the other polls and it'll be uh recycled each week um i'll have it on the screen right now but i'll be sending out that link so you can just automatically vote every friday i'll send out reminders every friday as well but that's how the poll is going to be done he also has another website that it's, it's like a fault and over prime dps tracker which is kind of cool uh, so if you guys want to check that out, I'll have that linked in the description below. But yeah, um, he doesn't have the names up there, and I kind of like that. He only has their symbols, so you really got to know the game you like <laughs> if you're going to pick the one that you like. You really got to, you can't just click one. <laughs> Perfect. Whatever works. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, pretty amazing. I really appreciate him doing that. Um, it's going to make uh, doing the polls a lot easier. And I won't have to make them in fucking Photoshop anymore. I can just take a <laughs> goddamn screenshot of them. <laughs> and, all right, so let's move on to the discussion topic, which we actually kind of got into a little bit, uh, talking about the success, overall success of Overprime's closed beta tests. And what we're talking about is the efficacy of these tests and what they mean. And, um, whew, yeah, the Overprime, they were... I checked at one point in time on Steam charts, and they were the top trending game. They weren't the top game on Steam. They were the top trending game on Steam because they had, like, a 4,000% yeah. increase in players or some shit like that. Which, if that was intentional for that metric, that's huge. Yeah. Because, and, and with their marketing in the past, it wouldn't surprise me if it was intentional. And it would honestly justify that early streamer release... 100% for me, right? If that was, yeah, was it annoying that they let streamers play two days before everybody else? Absolutely. But from a marketing perspective, if they did that to give a metric to Steam metrics, right? And then have that giant increase afterwards, brilliant marketing, <laughs> whole, all, I'm on board 100%. <laughs> I don't get why that's annoying, Jelly. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> Just get good, scrub. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, what, what do you think about the uh, the free weekends and how they how they can affect all these games? Um, I think they're good. Um, again, I think they're also a double edged sword. Uh, you can have, uh, I believe we spoke about this. What uh, predecessor uh, did in their uh, last test, um, you know, that can leave a bad taste in the community's mouth. Uh, mm -hmm. for a long time uh so with these tests you want to be um as open as possible um as the dev team because uh as problems are going on and you're trying to fix them you need to constantly uh keep your community involved um you don't want to just go dark on them and just you know have them sit there like man i wish i can get into a game a lot of people would just give up you know what i mean a lot of people's time is uh you know might be you know not a lot of time you know they might have a very small amount of time to play your game so you want to keep that line of communication open and um, that's on the bad side, but on the good side, uh, it is great marketing. Uh, we see that with um, Overprime, like you said. Um, I mean, the fact that they did do the streamers a couple days before definitely got everybody hyped up. I mean, people are coming in, check out this cool looking game. You know, people are like, oh wow, it's going to be free and 
couple days or i have a chance to get in in a couple days or whatever um so yeah uh, i think it was great uh but gotta be careful gotta be careful mm-hmm. yeah, and it's, it's a having a free weekend is an ethereal right click get it risk reward <laughs> eh? <laughs> eh? <laughs> eh? Eh? i was dumb <laughs> Take it back. Get out of here. I did not take it back. <laughs> uh, it's another important thing is if you leave a bad taste in people's mouths, you need to get rid of it as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Predecessor has shown us they don't do that. And we, from what we've seen, don't mangers. Um, <laughs> That's why I bought your mom it, some scope. <laughs> but so we've seen that with Predecessor in that they had their last open weekend in July. And we've basically gotten nothing from them. And it's just sat there. And you can see, even in their community, they're slowly losing hope and losing the will to, like, believe in Predecessor. Especially after a successful weekend like Overprime just had. Right. I think I think even a lot of the Predecessor fanboys looked at Overprime and went, you know, maybe. Like, and that's that's a terrifying thought. Knowing that they're completely different games in terms of style and gameplay. Other than the, the heroes are the same. Knowing that your your core fan base is wavering to a complete opposite game should be terrifying. Another thing I'll say is you got to make sure that you actually build upon these weekends. Mm-hmm. Um, don't try and go too crazy. Like uh, like we saw with Fault, I personally this wasn't true for everybody, but I personally the performance of Fault went down with each free weekend that I played leading up to their early access. And then their early access was even worse than anything I'd experienced before. Like their first sort of free weekend, I think was around Christmas of fucking whenever. And it was like, it functioned really well. And I was like super impressed with the game. Then the next one, like I was like, Oh, well, I'm getting all these weird stutters and I'm crashing. And then the next one was like, I'm dropping down the two FPS for some reason. And it's like, what the hell's going like why is it getting worse every time so you got to make sure that you're actually building upon it and if one weekend i think goes worse than the previous ones that you've had you really do need to step back as predecessor is kind of doing and make sure you address the issue before you bring it back out to the community maybe that's what they're up to i i think that's absolutely what they're up to i think the silence is the biggest problem yeah. is they've done nothing to mitigate their losses and then especially with that post that we got at the end of the year, that they they there. almost made it. They opened the, ru- the wound yeah. over again because of yeah. it, right? They it and that, We weren't sure that healed right, so let's just tear it right back open and just <laughs> make sure go. everything's there okay. Oh, no, it's There's not okay. Alcohol great, great. In there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't understand the, the... With these developers, they have to know that their community isn't like... Uh, ignoring anything you know Mm -hmm. we see all that you know what i mean so when you come out you know what was it like uh seven months or something like that and just said oh yeah you know next year here's a recap of everything dude bro remember that last weekend (laughs) that (laughs) went like shit (laughs) can we address that like (laughs) come on man (laughs) you don't give people something else to talk about they're just going to keep refer- reverting back to the yeah. last thing they have to talk about, which was yeah. how bad the weekend went. Yeah. It's not and good. that's that's the problem. And that's, I think that's a bigger issue for the Paragon successors than it is for something like Ethereal. Ethereal kind of exists in its own box where any announcement from Ethereal is relatively unique. It's not like, which hero are they releasing? It's what is the new hero that we've never seen before, never heard before, never anything like that. Right? And so... I think the Paragon successors have a harder time with that, but at the same time need to be more aware of that problem because they have a harder time with it. Yeah. Yeah, a teaser from you guys is an actual teaser. A teaser for us is like, oh, that's Figmel's arm. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what I found find interesting, we talked about this last week and then we saw it actually in practice. We were talking about how cool it would be if one of these had all the skins available during their their free weekend. I think it's funny that we talked about that last Wednesday, and then I, I it think happened. Yeah, Jay, <laughs> you and I specifically talked about this. I don't yeah. think Jelly had anything important to say about it. 
Um, I don't know why I'm fucking with jelly all of a sudden. Dude, Mangus is on one today. Holy crap. I don't know why. I know. It all started in Discord. It was hilarious. <laughs> I did it. I did it. at one today. He's been on it. Okay. Good minute, to know. Minute Jesus. negative one before we even... <laughs> Apparently my, my months of shitting on Mangus are suddenly coming back Going to back. back. Yeah. <laughs> And slowly gathering all these burns for you. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> How much of an effect do you think that had, Jay, on like people's perception of Overprime that they got to like just have all the money in the world and buy whatever the fuck they wanted during the, the closed beta test? Okay, so we see time and time again that uh Overprime is almost dangerously like experts at marketing. Mm -hmm. These guys are really good. I mean, the fact that they was like, okay, let's open up everything. Everything that we have right now. This is everything that's probably going to be at least in day one. You know what I mean? Gave us a taste of it. Me, I I want those skins. I got to play with those skins. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to go into this game now. I'm not going to have any of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's, it is a great teaser um to get like our appetites ready for the game um so yeah i think i think that was free. genius say again first taste is free yeah right they, they give you the first taste for free and then then you have to keep coming I back think. because of it we talk about crack again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i think the downside for overprime specifically is yes they gave you the first taste for free which is great absolutely but if they're going to be locked behind loot boxes, mm. if anything, that is almost worse for them to make them free initially. Yeah. Because now you've made the first taste free, <clears throat> but you're going to make people gamble to get their second taste. And that <laughs> yeah, is a bad that's thing. Not cool. That is. That's in there. Yeah. I, I'm going to say it right here on them. that I am not buying loot boxes for skins. <laughs> they don't have my money if they do that. If, they, if mm -hmm. things are locked in a way that I could lose out, in terms of like finance, I'm not doing it. Like that mm -hmm. is just is just stupid, you know. So hopefully, oh, man, I would know at least a few of those skins are probably going to be behind that uh, loot box. Uh, those stupid surprise mechanics. So the best thing they could do to have with their loot boxes, if they're going to have them, right? It, it's just if it's a fact of life at this point, the best thing they can do is make it achievable to earn them without spending money. Yep. that you can play games and every 10 games you get a loot box right whatever whatever they want to make their metric make it achievable don't make it 50 games because that's ridiculous but that if i can earn loot boxes for free and i have the same chance as if i paid for one then that is their the best case you can probably get out of a loot box system like that and for the love of god don't have keys for the loot boxes like mm -hmm. paragon had I, I had forgotten all about that till we started talking about this where you would have like fucking 50 goddamn loot boxes and no keys because you had to mm -hmm. roll on it was it, it, it sometimes you'd have the opposite thing you'd have five keys and no fucking loot boxes the do the dope oh that was so annoying that was so yeah. annoying yeah that was the start of like killing the population in Paragon yeah you're not gonna generate a big community when you have like the crappiest ways <laughs> You're just not going to do it, man. Like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. the, only the hardcore fans are going to do with it. No new, a new person to come in there and be like, yeah, I'm not about to buy these keys to buy this loot box to possibly get this skin. Like, it's, it's too many loopholes. Too many. Mm -hmm. It's sleazy. Absolutely. It's straight up yeah. sleazy. Yeah. Not. I'm not saying that that's what Overprime's going to do, but no, that's, we don't no, know. We're just saying that that's a fallback of Paragon, and that's something for us to definitely keep our eye on. With Overprime, with them being backed by Netmarble, the largest mobile gaming company mm -hmm. in South Korea, mobile games. I mean, we know how those are. Overprime even kind of tipped their hand a little bit in, in being really heavy handed. Is that the whole store is in a casino? <laughs> yeah, did you notice that? <laughs> like, I that's... felt it was a bar, but yeah, there were slot machines back there. <laughs> there were slot there. machines. <laughs> it's a casino. It's that's... straight up a casino. Ah. And that terrifies me that to me is them like really leaning into it yeah. and being like you want loot boxes we'll right. get you some fucking loot boxes right, right? like <laughs> jesus christ man i uh yeah that is terrifying it's just please like, don't be 
Don't be EA. Come on. We don't. My concern <laughs> is I think we may get a what kind of what Fault did is that you can buy straight up all the skins that were existed in Paragon originally, but any overprime skins are locked behind the loot box. I, I really wouldn't mind them seeing locking those skins behind real money and every other thing is unlockable. Yeah. Right. But God, yeah, if they're behind a loot box, like, I want that Defector skin, man, but I really don't want to <laughs> yeah. gamble on loot I boxes. really hope that the Paragon skins are not included in the loot box because that will feel the worst. Oh, yeah. Is you buy a oh, loot box shit. and get a skin for something that they didn't even make. That would piss me off. I mean, so even fast. if they did improve the textures and stuff, yeah. Yeah, that's not like yeah. gambling for something you've already owned before. Mm -hmm. That would Ooh. make me so angry so fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't like how that feels. Makes me feel Please. dirty. Overprime, don't do it. No, <laughs> don't do it. I, I it's just. I think there's almost the 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 pros definitely outweigh the cons for having these free weekends and these open weekends. Uh, you get so, I'm sure Jelly could tell us, you get, they get so much data out of it. And mm -hmm. like, um, like both Ethereal and, uh, Overprime did those surveys, um, that that's going to give them all kinds of stuff to work with and let them know what direction they need to be going. Um, yeah, it's just a great way to get the name out there get some direction for your game, find bugs. That's just free bug testers right there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. I mean, for us with Ethereal, getting people that are like, oh, I got stuck on this part of the map that we would, we're sitting there going like, why would you ever walk over there? But someone <laughs> did it, sure <laughs> yeah. enough, right? And so it, it helps immensely to find that kind of stuff. Was that guy named Dark Lee? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh... I am kind of surprised that, granted, I, I don't participate. I'm not in the test in the way I would have been if I was still just a creator. But there are some secrets on the map that people still haven't discovered in Ethereal that surprised me. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. We need to get some people in there. By the way, Dark, <laughs> yeah. Dark's going to be on the show in probably about two months, I think. Okay. Nice. We've, we've been talking about this Dark Lee character. I met Dark Lee when I did the, <laughs> the old casting call videos. He was like the worst phase I'd ever seen in my life. And I <laughs> burned him down hardcore. Annihilated him. <laughs> I did. Well, you can talk about your own clips forever, Mangoose. So, you know, you got to find someone else to put down. Well, yeah, exactly. That's why I did casting call. So I wouldn't have to have my own shitty gameplay on my channel. <laughs> I plan on doing it again. It's ingenious. <laughs> I can't play this hero. Somebody else play it for me and I'll just make a video out of it. <laughs> Genius. Talking about sleazy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, man, I think that's about all I had to discuss. We've already gone pretty pretty long, I think. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I knew we were going to go long this time, so I don't really matter. Not Holy shit. Time. Yeah, we've gone yeah, yeah. about an hour and a half. Not too bad. That's not too bad. But yeah, I, th I think that's about all I had to say about the weekends and all that. Uh, Jay, you got any final comments about that? Um, just uh, looking forward to all these games, man. Uh, I will be uh, streaming. I guess I'll do my plug. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be um, I'm gonna be streaming uh, Fault and uh, Predecessor Overprime and uh, Ethereal. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you did. <laughs> on uh, Wednesday uh, through Friday, and sometimes a surprise stream on the weekend, Sunday or uh, Saturday. Um, but you can find me at uh, Twitch.tv jban underscore 63 right Sweet. on just one quick question the buff the side lane buffs in ethereal what are those called those dragon type things the guardians oh the, the wyverns you mean i was trying to get jay to say it incorrectly oh oh, oh. <laughs> i i i didn't even know what they were i i, I forgot what that what they were even called <laughs> <laughs> Jelly, you got anything to plug? Any final comments? Uh, just the usual stuff, man. Twitch.tv slash Jellynees. Marvelous Mondays on Mondays at 8 o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, that's about it. What's the game this Monday? Do you know yet? Uh, I have no idea yet. Is it going to be, <laughs> is it gonna be Boyfriend Dungeon again? Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> Checked out a little bit of that. It was pretty good. That not as good. Game, man. Not as good as Dream Daddy. Not, but, but pretty good. <laughs> 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 all right well that is going to wrap it up this week folks i uh, hope you enjoyed the program i hope you're enjoying all of these games that are coming out it just 
so, so nice to see that they're finally coming out and finally being playable after we've waited for so freaking long. And I feel mm -hmm. terrible for you console guys out there. They're going to have to wait maybe another year longer, but Overprime's probably your best hope right now. Still don't know. Maybe one of the albums will come out of the blue and have a console release. But uh, for right now, your best bet is to just keep your keep your eye on Overprime, I think. But that is going to wrap it up for this week. Bye, food. Bye, food. <laughs> <laughs> Man, goose. Special shout out to channel members Foolish Blood Hunter, Jelly Knees, Meow Mix for Men, Stunt, Ferenth, and Raven.